Shoevers and Bookers to the Basic Automotive Wiring 001. 001 because I'm not a professional and will probably get something wrong. So I invite you to double check what I've put here. You know, there's lots of information out on the internet, but uh, I think this will help everybody along pretty well that's doing some kind of classic car such as an old Volkswagen Bug or a Doom Buggy or even something to the effect of an old Charger from the 60s. What this will not cover is a new automobile, a newer automobile. I'm talking anything that's fuel injected, anything that's using uh, an electronic fuel pump or electric fuel pump, I mean. And uh, uh, let's just stick to the old stuff. This is uh, something that you can use even on all the way down to a Briggs & Stratton engine. Uh, to some some uh, degree, and uh, it's good just general knowledge for people to know and uh, good knowledge for somebody that might have come across the project and they just aren't sure uh, what, what to do with uh, the wiring on it, uh, namely sand rails or something to that effect. So with that, uh, once again, double check what I'm saying here, double check what I'm doing because don't, I don't want no emails coming to me saying, oh, you burned my, you burned up my alternator or you burned up my starter. Well, you know what? You haven't done your homework. Don't take it from one source ever on the internet. Look at multiple sources and do your homework so that you get it right. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at the pieces that we have in our electrical system on a very basic, very, very basic uh, level. Number one, we have a battery, okay? And we have, the battery is where all of our juice comes from to start the engine. Now, not only do we have to start the engine, but once we do start the engine, we have to recharge the battery back up for next time. So there's a charging system as well. Okay, but before we get there, let's just go through the pieces. So we have the battery and we have the starter. Now what the starter does is that turns the engine over and cranks it uh, uh, when we go to start it. Okay, it's just temporarily on just for the moment that you hit the ignition switch. And uh, when you let off of the, the switch or uh, in a modern car, it's a button in some cases, um, the starter stops spinning. On that starter, if we look right here, that's what's called a solenoid. Now, let's just take a look at a, cel a basic solenoid, okay? This is a solenoid. Now, as you can see, there's four poles on this, two large ones and two small ones. All a solenoid is is a switch that runs a switch. So what you have is, is you have these two small poles and they're connected to an electrical switch inside that when this switch is turned on, it turns this switch on. Well, why do we do that? Because when you're running power from something like a battery to this starter motor, it requires a ton of amperage. So we don't want to have to run all that amperage all the way up to the dashboard and to the ignition switch and everything else. And we'd have to have big giant ignition switches to be able to handle the load and everything else. So what we do is we run a small switch to the dashboard. And when we activate that switch, it activates the big switch inside the solenoid that lets that power come straight from the battery and into the starter on a starter in a general sense in most most times or anyhow anyhow uh, the majority of times unless you're working on something really old the solenoid is actually mounted on them usually which is right here so we really don't need this boy here i just wanted to show what what the solenoid looked like the other thing we have is a coil what the coil does is sends a large, large amount of voltage to the distributor, which then distributes that voltage to the various engine cylinders to fire in an order. Let's take a look. We've got a distributor here. We've got the coil. What this the coil does 
is goes into a, the center cap on the distributor. Now inside the distributor is what's called a rotor. This little guy spins around in the center. That center plug connects to this top portion of the rotor. And as the rotor spins, the distributor is in time with the, the pistons in the engine so that when they are on the compression stro stroke uh, and they, they are about ready to hit their uh, uh, top of their stroke, this fires the spark plug that fires the compressed fuel in the respective cylinder. So this spins around and is connected to a gear or something to that effect inside the engine and is timed with the engine. This is where you can also adjust your timing to make the spark happen a little sooner or a little later, uh, depending on your application and how the how you uh, how the engine runs and reacts. Uh, there's a lot of different factors where you would uh, you could alter the timing, including uh, um, the types of fuel you're using, uh, the quality of the fuel you're using, and other things. So, we also have in our little electrical uh, toy box of goodies here, we have a switch. This little switch right here, that turns everything on and off. That's like turning your key to where the lights turn on on your dash, okay? The other thing we have is another switch, but I'm calling this a button. This is a starter button. This is, where, this is what happens if you're using a, a, a key type switch when you turn it that extra little bit to hit the starter this is what the button will take care of it works the same as these two pieces it's just that it's all in one piece so the other thing that we have here is a generator there's our generator what the generator does is it hooks to a pulley that hooks to the engine and when the engine's running it creates an electrical uh, current the current is fed back to the battery to recharge it and to also continue running the coil and you guys things such as your headlights or whatever else you're running while you are driving the car without the generator or alternator as modern cars have on them your battery would only run the engine until it went dead and then your engine would die one of the things that you have to do when you're feeding the electricity back to the battery, though, is you have to regulate it because the engine turns at different speeds. So if it's turning at different speeds, that means it's going to create different voltages uh, depending on how you're driving. So if you're in first gear and revved way up, it's going to create a lot of voltage. If you're in fourth gear and barely idling down the highway, it's not going to create much. But the one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to put too much voltage back into the battery because it'll destroy it. So what we have is a, a little item called a voltage regulator. And what that does is it only allows the proper amount of voltage to come back from the starter to the battery to charge the battery and back to the, the rest of the system so the system doesn't get overloaded. If we didn't have the voltage regulator, when you revved up, it would do things like blow your headlights out because it just burned the bulbs out or blow your dash lights out. So we need to regulate that voltage. It can go under, but it can't go over because over it will heat it up, heat up an element and burn bulbs and stuff like that out. Okay. So we have all of our little pieces here. Well, all right, so how does all this work together? Well, let's just kind of start in one spot and work our way through it. I'm not gonna be doing uh, uh, wire colors or anything like that. I'm just gonna use one color here and uh, just kind of go piece by piece and explain how everything connects. So the first thing we have is the battery goes to the alternator. Now make note, once again, that this alternator represents or this solenoid right here represents the solenoid on the starter so the battery a big big wire goes to the one end of the solenoid a big big wire comes out of the solenoid and comes to the starter the starter is grounded and the battery is grounded so as you can see there, we have a circuit, a full circuit, positive to negative. All right. Now, the other thing we have is we have a switch. 
we have to run a smaller cable to the switch okay from the switch to the button from the button to one of the posts on the solenoid the other post goes to ground now one thing to note here is is that the other post that goes to ground is just grounded to the to the starter here so there isn't an extra wire there or shouldn't be a, i don't believe anyway uh so the other thing that we have to do from the switch is make sure that the ignition is uh hot so we have to fire up the coil make sure we have electricity going to the coil naturally the coil is also grounded yeah let's try that again the coil is also grounded yeah let's try that again because dipshit can't figure out what he wants to do all right we'll just call it grounded right there okay let's make sure we got all our little lines under these so we understand that's ground that means ground we also have a cable a spark plug wire that comes from there to there it's called the coil wire actually but it's just a spark plug wire okay now the other thing we also have is uh we have the power coming from the generator to the voltage regulator and we run from the voltage regulator back to the battery okay so what happens is this wire going here is always hot you flip this switch on it it fires up the coil sends electricity to the coil now the coil here is just a big capacitor right so it builds up a charge it's like a big battery it builds up a charge and then when it needs to let loose it blasts it out so even though there's only 12 volts going into the coil because of the way the battery works the, the capacitor works inside of it and such when it blasts it out on demand that blast is about you know right around 40,000 volts or whatever somewhere around there so we turn the switch on that fires up the coil that also sends power to the button we hit the button that ignites the the switch inside of the solenoid which connects the two poles here and sends power to the starter which turns the motor over okay once the motor is turning is fired up and we let off the button this switch stays on and keeps electricity going to the coil which leaves the electricity going to the distributor and the spark plugs while the engine is running uh, this is spinning on the generator and it is producing electricity and that comes back to the battery and charges the battery and keeps the rest of the system with a steady stream of 12 volt electricity going through it simple as that flip the switch off ignition turns off engine dies turn the switch on hit the button ignition turns on hit the button get her spinning pow pow and we're back in action and running again that's all there is to it nothing more nothing less So that's it, boys. I, uh, that's about as far as I need to take this, Willie, and uh, this should get anybody going as far as uh, setting up a basic, basic, basic wiring system for something like a doom buggy or a sand rail or even a motorcycle or anything like that. They all work about the same. Um, so uh, I, know there's, I, I know it's not technical. I know it's not, you know, perfect what i've been gone through here but what it really is is basic so that people can understand it those that don't understand how everything works or some some kid maybe trying to put a sand rail together that he inherited somehow for cheap or whatever uh, just make sure you know that you use when you do these wi this wiring type stuff make sure you, you use the, the uh, proper size wires depending on how much current is going to go through it you know like the wire going from the battery to the starter that needs to be a battery cable right a big wire uh, uh, the, the wire going to the switch and the button on the dash uh, 
you know, it's, it doesn't need to be huge, but I would bet, I think 14 is, is probably acceptable 14 or, uh, or 12 or whatever. Um, and that's probably a little overkill. Um, you know, on a, on a, uh, something like a Volkswagen bug or a sand rail or something like that, I think you should be able to get rid of, get away with pretty much 14 everywhere except for the starter. And, um, uh, you could probably use a little small, smaller in some places, but, uh, uh, you know, overkill isn't a bad thing sometimes. So just with that, um, I'm going to leave this be and keep her simple and short. And uh, hopefully this helps somebody out that's, uh, you know, clueless. This isn't meant for anybody that has any kind of clue how this works. This is pretty much meant for people that are uh, clueless. So... Uh, I think we I think we met our I think we met our uh, requirements here as far as uh, taking care of that. So uh, with that, Amadi, later.